Hello again. So this week we're also going to be doing another lab that's totally different from the last two labs that we did. We have now gone through a series of um, chapters where we've looked at the different types of microbes, whether they be prokaryotic, eukaryotic, whether they're protozoa, bacteria, fungi, and all these different things. Now we're going to kind of shift gears and now we're going to start talking about what happens if a an organism, regardless of what type it is, a virus or whatever, um, which isn't an organism, uh, whether it's a bacteria or it can get into your body and cause disease. Now remember that there's a difference between um, infection and disease. So you can be infected with all types of things. We are all infected right now. We have bacteria that lives in our body permanently. We have bacteria that lives in our body temporarily. We have yeast that grows on us all these different things. So when you hear the infection, word infection at the doctor's office, he's actually referring to the fact that you have a disease or that microbe that did infect you is now causing problems with your body. So keep that in mind when you hear the word infection that that's not really what we're talking about when we talk about um, microbiology. When, when we talk about infection here, it just means you transmitted something from one person to the next. That doesn't necessarily mean disease. Now, if that microbe then gets past your defenses, it gets through your mucous membrane, um, has ability to get through phagocytes or resist phagocytosis or however it enters your cells, then it can become disease causing. So that's really the difference between what we're talking about here. So what we're going to do is this fun little epidemiology lab, it's one of my favorites, and um, it's not in your lab manual, this will be a handout on Blackboard. And this is pretty much a class activity. We all have to do it together. So if you don't know the names of the people in class by now, which you probably already do, you're going to be introduced to them this way. So what's gonna happen is every one of you will have a tube of colored water with a swab in it. Only one of you has an actual swab that is infected with that particular microorganism. The microorganism that we're gonna use is called serratia marcescens. And we're gonna use it because when it grows, it actually produces a red pigment. So it's really cool, you can see it pass from person to person on the plates when you see those red colonies, okay? And so these will all be numbered. Everybody will get a different numbered one, but nobody knows who's infected, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a plate, a regular um, auger plate, um, a regular nutrient auger plate. Everybody will have one plate, one tube, okay? And on your plate, you're going to do what we've done before, where you divide it into five quadrants. So remember, you make your upside down Y, and then two lines there. And what you're going to do on your plate is you're going to name a number each little segment, one, two, three, four, five. This is going to represent the five people that you're going to touch or hand, have a handshake with that potentially could pass um, our little disease on. Okay, now, because most of us, okay, most people except for me, um, no, the majority of the population are right-handed and they're going to write with their right hand, you're going to shake hands with your left hand. Okay, those of us that are left-handed, it's a little awkward for us, but that's okay. So you're going to put on your right hand a normal glove that we use in class, but on your left hand, which is going to be the handshaking hand, you're gonna put on one of these lovely gloves like they use in the food service industry. This glove is going to be your handshaking glove. Now oh, it's all sweaty. All right. Um, <laughs> can't get it on because my hand's sweaty. So, this is your handshaking glove. And like I said, we're gonna do this as a class together. So everybody at the same time will have their supplies. You'll have your plate labeled like this, and you'll have your, your lab that you printed out for Blackboard and it'll have um, your name, you'll put your name on it, your swab number, and then you'll have a place to put the five people that you touch in order, one, two, three, four, five, their name and their swab number, okay? So what everybody's going to do at the same time is you're going to take your um, swab, and you may have to use tweezers to get it out, and it's okay if you set the lid down now, and you're going to pull it out with your regular gloved hand, Okay, it's just so you can reach it, all right? And then with that, with holding it in the hand that you have your regular glove on, you're going to swab 
your palm, okay? And use as much as you can. You can even double dip. Go in there, get a bunch of it. You want a lot, okay? You want to get it really, really, really moist, okay? So then you're going to put that back in there, hopefully not contaminating the outside of it, okay? You're going to put that back in there. And now everybody at the same time is going to go shake hands with five different people. Then what I want you to do is I want you to cross the sides of the room. I don't want half on the, I want you to cross that middle border that nobody wants to cross. And I want you to shake hands with five different people that do not sit at your table, okay? Or if we're in a small class, just make sure you make your rounds to most of the people in the class, okay? And so what you're going to do, both of you with your left hand that has the swab on it, you're going to shake hands. Well, obviously I have my other hand, but I'll pretend this is somebody else's hand. And you're going to shake hands with them. But when you shake hands with them, you're going to do more of a slide than a handshake. Well, you can shake too. But you want your first two fingers to touch their palms. Okay, that's the key, is to have your fingers touch their palm. Because then what you're going to do with that hand, which would be this hand, <laughs> you're going to take, so you shake your hand with your first person, and now you have their swab gunk from their palm on your two fingers. Now you're going to take, and in your segment number one, on your plate, on the auger side of the plate, not the lid, you are going to take your fingers, and even if just one can fit, you press it, or you can do two of them, on that section of the plate. Okay? Now you don't re-swab, you don't do anything else. You go to your, the next person, you shake hands with them, and then put your fingers in segment two. But before you go and touch that second person, with your other hand that has the regular glove on it, which would not have anything on it because you're using this hand, not both hands, you're going to write their swab number and the name down of the person that you touch first. So you could maybe write their swab number and their name down before you touch them, and then you go to number two, get their swab number, their name, touch them, and put it on it. So you do it five times, okay, with five different people. Make sure before you take your gloves off and are done that you have everybody in the class has shaken hands with five people and then everybody have their plates done, okay? Remember to not, that you put the fingers on the auger. I've had in the past students actually touch the plate, the lid, instead of the auger. And make sure that you touch every time that you've touched somebody else, okay? We, we want to make sure we can follow the chain of this particular um, outbreak, okay? And so what should happen is when we read our plates the next class period, we should be able to see, so you'll look at your plates and you'll look for the amount of red growth that you have. I have a red marker. The amount of red growth that you have and you're going to determine if it's a lot of growth, a little growth. And everybody's going to write their results on the board. And we should actually be able, as a class, to trace it back to the one person that was infected when we started.